Hello again. You are once more on the hill with the toad. I uh, was watching uh, Mr. Barlow's video earlier where he's been customising uh, his knives and I thought that's, that's it's pretty good, pretty good. So I just thought I'd quickly go over the attempts I had when uh, I was trying to customise uh, yeah, the knives. I didn't have as much success as uh, Mr. Barlow has had and I kind of gave up, but it's made me want to look at it again. This isn't a long video, but I'll just uh, quickly show you what I did and I'll explain to you how I did it. Now, I mainly did it uh, on uh, open elves, which I think are ideal knives for customising. Now, this is a um, number nine. Oh, what's it saying? Number six, sorry, it's a number six. Stainless steel blade. So basically all I did with this was uh, change the shape of the handle. I think it's far better like this. Didn't actually take an awful lot to do this. Very soft wood. Just uh, some filing and away you go. And I, I personally think I did a nice job on that. It feels better, I think it feels better anyway. Put it in the hand. And yeah. So... Yeah, that was my first attempt. And then I thought, uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll try and do something else. And I saw that uh, you can obviously change uh, carbon blades. So uh, I got myself a number 12 open L. And this is the result of that. I made a few mistakes in this. Same thing, I uh, standard the handle. Now, if you notice... There's blade exposed just there. That was my biggest mistake. Oh, I went a bit mad just there. Shouldn't have done that. It's dangerous. I have cut myself with this. So, uh, oops, caught it again there. See? Can't be too careful. Now, I can just lock it. There we go. So, I, uh, with a file and a knife, I put these, this swirling. Obviously I filed this down, so then I put this swirling, swirly thing in and um, then it went in with a, uh, a pen and filled in the dark area so it has that kind of effect. It was quite good. This this needs oiling badly. This is dry as buggery, this knife. It's been in the cupboard for quite a while, I've not had it out. But the main thing I did was with the blade is I soaked, I soaked the whole thing which wasn't also a very good idea, uh, for 24 hours in um, white spirit. And of course, it's made the blade black. Gives you that, that look, which is what um, Mr. Barlow's been uh, playing around with. This will rub off if you really want it to. Obviously, this is a carbon blade. It, uh, you can, you can, you can get the patina different, you know, send this back a little bit, or even just rub it off and it will come off. And then you then get uh, just a patina type blade. What this has done though, Again, because I left it in too long, it's all gone inside here. All in there, it's rusty. I don't know if you can see. Let me just... Oh, I need to cut myself. It's all in there. It's, it's actually rusty. But, yeah. That was my other attempt. And, yeah, it's okay. I would have been better off with a smaller one, not one to the 12. But, yeah, so that is the sort of thing you can do. I'll have another go at some point. So, uh, Mr. Barlow has uh, got me wanting to do this again. So yeah, so that was soaked overnight in white vinegar. Now you can also uh, do the thing where you you poke it into an apple. That'll do it. Poke it into an onion. That'll do it. I don't know, depending on the effect you want, how long it would uh, you need to do it for certain things. Uh, so the other thing is, obviously, is, as Mr. Barlow has also said, uh, mustard. All this sort of stuff to do dots and lines is yeah so the sky's the limit and this is actually like i said open holes are very good they're not expensive knives you can muck around with them an awful lot so that's that now there's just one other little thing i want to just mention i mucked around with this is so this is a uh off the right knife the blade broke uh the back spring broke so i um turned it into a uh Took it apart and turned it into a little fixed blade kind of thing. So if you imagine it inside here, it is basically the guts of the knife that I uh, uh, 
epoxy the whole thing, put some uh, stabilising wood in, put another handle around the outside of it and uh, bound it. And yeah, it, I've actually used this quite a lot. It, it actually works out as a quite a good little, uh, little knife. But, however, if you see here, now it's not very easy to see, but if you, can you see these little marks here? So it's not come out very well, this is just mucking around. Yeah, you can see it better on that if I catch the light. See, kind of, this is my attempt to do flames actually. You can catch it better. Yeah, you can see that, look. So what I've done there is I've taped off this area along here, leaving this exposed. Same thing on this side, I don't know, you can kind of catch it just there. And the same thing, I've dropped into white vinegar overnight. Next day, took it out, took the tape away, and what I had left, it's have etched it. Now I don't know why it did that on, it, that on here. See like the kind of rough surface it's given it. I don't know why that happened like that and it didn't do that on the open L. However, if you want to do some sort of etching, that appears to work. Now you can go even more that if you uh, tape all this off and then say paint mustard on there, leave it overnight, same sort of thing. You can also get the same or similar kind of effects. But yeah, this was just taped off, masked off, dropped into uh, white vinegar. And the sky is the limit. It's all down to your imagination. So, anyway, that was all I really got to say. I'm about to do another video on uh, UK knives, which I'll be starting once I've turned this one off. So hopefully you'll have a little squiz at that as well. Thank you for your viewing time. And if I don't see you in uh, about five minutes, I shall see you next time I see you. So from the toad, on the hill, see you out there.